pass through our square root of 13 j. So this is the direction the insects should move. Okay, I shall show you away. This is how you find the maximum rate of change. Okay, maximum rate of change you get. If you move the insect move along this direction, then the, it will get warmer fast. It okay, get warm very fast. Maximum rate of change. The temperature change fastest. Okay, for this direction. Okay. okay, so why this is the direction? I mentioned that this has to do with top product, right? Rate of change, directional derivative. Okay. Let me go to the something revised about factor again. Find that directional derivative in a direction U, right? Is actually del F dot with U. Okay? Del F dot with U, okay? So, then what is the maximum rate uh, to, to get maximum? Okay? So, del F dot with U is actually length of F, del F, length of U, U is many vector. But u is unit vector cosine theta. U is unit vector. Okay. The length one, okay? That means that the length of u is one. So look, look at this one. This is a directional rate of change. It's del f dot u. Okay? Del f dot u is actually length of del f times cosine u times theta. So why is it like that? Let's recall last time what you have, vector. So this is vector a, this is vector b, theta here. What is vector a dot b? Vector a dot b is length of a, length of b times cosine theta. Definition, geometrical definition of A dot B. Of A dot B, right? Another one, another definition of A dot B is uh, say if A is equal A one I as A two J, and let's say B is equal to B one I as B two J. So in our way, it's A dot B, 1, B1, plus A2, B2. Now this is another way to do a top product, but I'm looking at geometry now. Okay? So, a rational rate of change is the top product. And when is this top product maximum? First of all, we know that this is 1. Length of u is one, so that's why you can look at this. D u is equal to is maximal. Okay, this is maximal. When it happen is maximal when cosine theta is one. Cosine theta is always between minus one and one. So this is a maximum when cosine theta is one. What does it cosine theta is one? Equal to cosine theta one means means the theta is equal to zero. What does it mean? The two vectors are parallel now, okay? Same direction and parallel, okay? So it means that the vector, the u is what? The u is Direction. S. Gradient of F. Okay, this is in the same direction of gradient of F. So that means that theta equals zero. This means that U looking at is the same direction. Okay. 
S gradient of F. Okay, L F. So that is why I say that the direction where they have maximum rate of change okay, is the gradient vector. Okay, maximum rate of change. The maximum increase, okay, you want to have maximum increase, you must take gradient vector. Now you can then, okay, if you look at this picture here, I have the gradient just now, right? The gradient is T. 3 over square root 13 plus 2 over square root 13 j, right? This is gradient vector now. So if you move along this vector, then you have maximum rate of change. How about you move in opposite direction? The move in opposite direction, you know, you have, you have you actually the temperature will decrease fastest. Faster rate of change of decreasing now. Okay. In other direction, okay will be yeah so this is first of all we find a direction in maximum rate of change huh? so in this picture so d duf okay the maximum rate of change when theta equals zero which means that the u is in the same direction of gradient so what is the maximum rate of change now okay so from here this is one thing Rate of change. The maximum of rate of change version of U is what? Gradient of length of gradient of F. Okay, because maximum rate of change cosine theta is one R, cosine theta is one, then the unit unit vector is length is one, so the maximum rate of change is just this number, the length of the gradient. And in this case, let's look at the earlier one. Can you tell what is the maximum rate of change for the gradient gradient comma? So let me go back here. So the length of the gradient is how much? I find the gradient is 3, 2, right? So the maximum rate of change of gradient is actually this one actually the length of gradient is square root of 9 plus 4, right? 3 square by 2 square. 3 square plus 2 square. So actually, 9 plus 4, 13. This maximum rate of change you can get. So if I ask you, is it possible to find the maximum rate of change of the temperature equal to let's say three. Yes. Possible? Yes, right? Because three is still less than uh, square root thirteen, right? Not uh, three square is nine, so nine square less than okay. Is it possible for the insect? to have rate of change temperature equal to four. No. No, right? So this is a simple question you can actually why because four four is actually less greater than square root 13 only. So you know that it's impossible. I have to find a direction where the rate of change is four now. Okay, these are the simple questions you can answer. So that is why, okay, this important result now. Gradient, okay. So let me see how to find this, okay. The gradient, if the, real, if the gradient equals zero, then all directional derivative have, have zero change, okay. So this way easy. The gradient is supposed to be zero vector, then there is no rate of change in all direction, okay? Why? Because if this thing is equal to zero, then F 
any direction is actually del f dot u. Okay, zero vector dot u is always zero. Okay, zero vector dot u always zero. So the real chain, all direction is zero. That is for all directional derivative must be zero. Simple enough. Uh, when will the gradient be zero? Uh, like, like when the thing is like horizontal line? Uh? Yeah, so, suppose you, you differentiate then they're all zero. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, fine. Okay, at, at the certain point, uh, at, at that point, you get all zero. Okay, this is where it comes about maximum point, minimum point. This is where maximum point, minimum point. How do you know the point you have a maximum point or minimum point? You must directional derivative is zero. And no change anymore. And this is where you find out maximum point, minimum point. Okay. okay. Then the other part we, we have talked about already. What happened is this is not zero now. Real F is not zero. Then among all the possible direction, okay. Direction of F has the largest value of rate of change. Okay. The derivative at this direction is the largest. This one we tell already. Okay. And the magnitude of the, of the derivative is also the okay, the largest value is actually this. That's how I mentioned that which direction has the largest rate of change? Same direction and gradient, right? Same direction and gradient. That means you have maximum rate of change. And what is the maximum rate of change? Length of gradient of f. Okay, this is what I mentioned just now. Then how about the possible direction where opposite now, that means that if you make the opposite direction, opposite to gradient f, then they have a smallest value. Very small. Smaller in the sense that it's not zero, no? It's just the most negative value. Okay? The real chain is negative, the most negative value, all right? Basically, that's why you get this direction of most likely we this one. Okay. How come is minus gradient of f because of this cosine function? Cosine theta is either maximum is one, minimum is minus one. That's why you get negative one and positive one here. Okay. Cosine function okay, positive one, negative one. Okay. That's how you got this. So I use this the inside problem to bring out all these things together okay how do you okay find the rate of change in x direction and y direction and then how do you find the um, direction where you get maximum rate of change okay and then then how do you find the direction in any direction and in the stock product right so here i can now look at example 19 right so example 19 okay Let's find out example 19. Function is 3x squared y. Okay, find the gradient of f now. So remember the gradient of f is, is a vector, partial differentiation with respect to x, i direction, uh, partial differentiation with respect to y, j direction. So differentiate with respect to x, you're going to get 6 x y keep y constant right so this i direction and function by to y you get 3 x squared z with a function find a unit vector in the direction of a okay what is the unit vector in direction a a is 3 along i direction, j 4 along j direction, right? 4 j, 3 i. So this is vector A. 3 i plus 4 j. So unit vector of A, you should put a cap there, is actually A over length of A. This is how we get unit vector. So this is 
3i plus 4j over length of 3i plus 4j. The length of 3i plus 4j, you can find that for a rank triangle, is a 3 and 4 here. So this is actually 3i plus 4j over 5. So indicate 3 over 5, i plus 4 over 5, j. This answer the second part. Okay. So last part, I see here. Find the directional derivative of f at the point one two in the direction of a. So how do you write this? Okay. See now, so directional derivative, we can write this. The direction of a, unit vector a, right? Of f. So by definition, this actually partial differentiation of f with respect to x times the a is 3 over 5 okay, 3 over 5 is here u1 this one is here, u1 here plus partial differentiation with respect to y times 4 over 5. 4 over 5 is actually here. So, how you put in the y, x1, x equal to 1, y equal to 2, huh? So, for x equal to 1, you find out that, so for x equal to 1, let's see what is this thing. Uh, 6 times 1 times 2 is what? So, the first term is actually 6 times times 2, 3 over 5, plus partial differentiation y equals 3 times x squared, 3 times 1 squared, 4 over 5. So, then you press the calculator. So, you have 6 times 3 over 5, so 12 times 3 over 5 first, 12 times 3 over 5, okay, 12 times 3 over 5, a3, I have 5. Plus 3 times 4 over 5. 3 times 4 divided by 5. Okay, 48 over 5. So this uh, rate of change in this direction is 9.6. Yeah, if I don't make a mistake, it's going to look like this. 6 times 2 is 12, times 36, okay, 36 plus 9. Yeah, 40. 40 over 5. So this is the rate of change in the direction of A. Okay, so remember how to find rate of change of F in the direction of U is actually partial differentiation with respect to X, U1, but partial differentiation with respect to y, u2. u is actually u1, u2. Where the length of u1 and u2 add together, square must be 1. So this is example 19 about the rate of change. the function in that direction. Okay. What is the maximum rate of change? Can you tell? At that point, uh, 1, 2, the maximum rate of change is actually, you put x equal to, okay, maximum rate of change is actually, uh, okay, let's put it. Mr. Quack, Mr. Quack, I got a yes. question. Mm. The square root u, u1 square plus u2 square equals to 1, right? Is that an example or is, is that a principle? 
supposed to be. You must supposed have unit method. An example? Uh, this, this is not an example. Just oh, not an example you, idea. you must have a unit vector. Uh -huh. Unit vector, you, you find the, in order to find the dimensional derivative, the dimensional U, the U must be a unit vector. So that it can find a unit change. Okay, no, you, need, you move along one unit in that direction, how much the function change, the rate of change. Okay. That's why you need a unit vector. Okay, just like you, you, you need to okay, move along i direction, what is that? You have to move along i direction one unit, then you find out where is the rate of change on, on that direction. But then for the like the question B, right? The square root of 3 square plus 4 square equals to 5, right? It's not equals to 1. Okay. Like, square root uh, of uh, question B. square plus 4 square is, take the square root of the 5, right? Mm. Yeah, correct? It's not 1, right? Yeah, but then it's not one. Yeah, that's not one. It's not one. Yeah. That's right. This is not a unit vector. That's why I purposely put the cat in front on top there. So yeah, I want a unit vector. Oh okay. my god. See, this is a, a unit vector. Otherwise, you cannot find the rate of change along that direction. Okay, okay. That's why you need the head. Then get the unit vector first. And then from the unit vector, then you can put it in. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this example 19. Let's try another example now. Okay, number 20 now. Okay, so far, all right? A, a bit of question. That's number 20. So, Let's recap uh, again. I uh, talk about dimensional derivative. That means uh, you want to find the derivative along a certain direction. Okay. Of course, along the direction, you must make sure that the direction you talk about is a unit vector so that you can talk about rate of change. Every unit change in the direction, how much the function change. Okay. okay. Find the dimensional derivative. Okay, of f x y at the point minus two zero. Dimensional derivative. How to do that? So, what is the meaning of dimensional derivative? Okay, means last time I tell you that dimensional derivative is del f here. Okay, it's so within our f here. Sorry, sorry. Dimensional derivative, derivative right? of this thing in the dimensional unit vector u. Make the angle pi over 3 if you access this. So what they are looking for, look carefully here. Yeah. So they want directional derivative, the so du here, okay. F, what is this thing? Okay, we know that this is actually partial differentiation of u, sorry, x first, then u1, plus partial differentiation of f, so the y, and u2. So what is u1 and u2 now? Okay, the, the vector u is what? Making an anchor power tree with the x-axis. So u is what now? Okay, making pi over three with the x-axis u. So u is this one. So in, in terms of u1 and u2, how you do it? Let's say call u1 and u2. One okay, unit vector. You want to get unit vector length one? Okay, make sure you like unit vector. So this is one. That means where is u one now? U one is this u length. U two is this one, right? So u one is actually is what u one is equal to one cosine pi over three. It's actually half. So one sine pi over three, which is square root three over two. So u is a vector, unit vector, is actually half square root three over two. Okay. 
So I know U1 and U2, well, I need now is a partial differentiation of f with respect to x now. So, okay, partial differentiation of f with respect to x, differentiate e x y. Okay, differentiate with respect to x, you get i. Okay, differentiate e x y first, then differentiate x y and then y, right? So e x y. So this is actually i e x y. Same thing, you can talk about partial dimension, rest of the y, you get x, e, x, y. So at the point x equal to minus 2, y equals 0. So when x equal to minus 2, y equals 0, this is 0 here. So minus 2, y equals 0, you get minus 2. One is a better component in x direction, you know it's half. U2 is a better component in the y direction, is square 3 over 2. And so you have unit vector, right? So now you multiply. So this is partial differentiation with respect to x, then U1, partial differentiation with respect to y, then U2. So put them together. This is a uh, zero times half plus minus two times square root three over two. Okay, so it's actually minus square root three. So this is a big change in the direction. So what does it mean? This is negative, no? That means actually the value is actually going downhill. You move along the direction actually downhill, right? Going down because negative now. Free of change is negative, is going downhill, right? Decreasing. Afterward, let's do one more example, then I'll give you a bit to talk, some tutorial to work with. Alright, so example 20, okay, finish early, then I move on to example 21. I move on to example one, right? Okay, right? How to actually get, I mean, how to find an angle, a vector where it's making an angle pi over 3 with the x axis. You know how to draw it? I show, show it for you already. Okay, now I move on to example 21. Okay, the function is x square e y at the point minus two zero. Okay, find the maximum directional derivative. So this is just to test your knowledge, right? Maximum value of directional derivative is what answer straight away is gradient of f. This is maximum value. So what is uh, gradient of f first? The less answer, yeah. We then is partial differentiation of f relative to x, i, partial differentiation of f relative to y. Okay, so differentiation relative to x are uh, you get two x, e y. Then differentiation relative to y, you get x square, e y. Okay, now you find 
x equal to minus 2, y equal to 0. So you get minus 4i okay, because x equal to minus 2, y equal to 0. Now e power 0 is 1. And then when x equal to minus 2, okay, 4, y equal to 0 is actually 4, t. Okay. x equal to minus 2, so 2 times 2 is uh, minus 4. x squared is Oh, so right, so we get minus 4i plus 4j. So maximum value of direction like this is just length of this thing. So length of this thing is equal to what? It's actually minus 4 square root of square plus 4 square, right? So it actually 16 by 16, 32. Maximum rate of change in the direction is square root of 32. So you can find square root of 32 equal to okay, 3 point, sorry, I think I made a mistake there, square root of 32, 4 square root of 2, right? 4 square root of 2 here, yeah. we will change. Okay, the question, first part. Find the unit vector in a direction which the maximum rate occur. So unit vector where the direction maximum rate occur is what? It's the same direction of gradient. Okay, so gradient is actually this one. It's actually minus 4i plus 4j. You want the same direction where maximum rate of change is, it has same direction, right? Unit vector in the same direction of this, right? Maximum rate of change. Must be that. So the unit vector u is actually same as same direction. Of S gradient F, right? By unit vector. So it must be what? It should be this thing over the length of it must be this thing here. Yeah. Gradient of f over the length of f here. So u cap is equal to this u cap now is okay. Uh, minus 4i plus 4j over 4 square root 2. Okay, find out length square first. Of so this is actually minus 1 over 2 square root i plus 1 over square root 2j. Okay, this is the U we're talking about. We're talking about and this part B here. The direct, the vector has the same direction and gradient where we have maximum rate of change. I see you find a unit vector direction which decrease most rapidly. So vector where decrease most rapidly, of course, is opposite of the gradient. So this actually opposite of the gradient. Okay. Then you take a unit vector, so you must over the length of your opposite there. Right? So this actually opposite this, you know, is 1 over square root i, i plus minus now. Minus 1 over square root 2 j. Opposite the of uh, S and B, okay? The direction where you uh, decrease most rapidly, maximum rate of change, okay? And it's, it's a decrease more rapidly now. So what is the rate of change of the answer in part C now? Okay, answer in part C actually, you see, right? The rate of change is, is a uh, decrease most rapidly is same, okay? The gradient, you find the gradient here. Gradient is actually, if you do this, the same answer is what? Minus 4 square 2, right? So you, you can put it this way, let's say, okay, uh, this one is actually, gradient is minus 4, 4, and then talk with this one, 
this one u is opposite direction of this thing um, minus 1 over square root 2 1 over square root 2 right One in part C, so you you find out this is a three minus four square root two minus four square root two is is actually minus two times square root two minus four square root two right so actually minus four square root two. Of maximum rate or change. Okay, maximum rate or change is this one, four square root two, and this is minus four square root two. This is example twenty one, and I can pick some tutorial question to illustrate more. So this is a uh, example 21. Any issue? Let me see any buddies have any comment there. No, any yet? Okay. So anyone finish copying the answer? Let me know if you think you need time to copy the answer. Okay, so uh, directional derivative, huh? Okay. And then okay, I move on to the next page, right? I want to move on to the tutorial question. Oh, about maximum minimum later. So, the dollar question first. Get the dollar to nine. Okay, two question nine. Okay, find the directional derivative of this thing. Find okay, the directional derivative. For the function, this sign is f x y equal to x square y cube minus y four at the point one. Of course, you need the direction. Direction is this one. Direction of the vector is a unit vector now. Direction given by making 
cái ngang cơ thì được vào của và của phò the power of for uh, i think this is with, with the x axis ha thì the power of measure x axis ha okay from x axis this is the question here okay so how do you find dimensional derivative by definition this is actually d u f so, so the partial differentiation of u refers to x plus then u1 then partial differentiation of f respect to y then u2 what is u1 and u2 now so you can draw the x-axis and then this angle is 45 degree pi over 4 Yeah, the length is one. So horizontal direction U1, vertical direction U2, right? So how do you find U1 and U2? So U1 is one time cosine pi over four, which is square two over two. And U2 is actually one times sine power four is equal to two over two. Okay. Then you need to differentiate with respect to x first. Okay, that's fine now, yes. Partial differentiation of respect to x, you get two x y cube. Okay. Partial differentiation of f respect to y, get three x square y square minus four y cube okay put it in so a point i want to get is at two one okay at the two one so at two one x equal to two y equal to one get two times two times one Actually, four. I do one. I get three times one. Three times two plus three times two square. One square. One square. One is four times one square. One cube here. That's equal to two now. So we get twelve. Minus four is eight. You can put it in. This is equal to four times square root two over two plus eight times square root two over two. So all together is six square root two now. This is directional derivative of question nine. How do you? Calculate the direction of derivative. You already can try your question ten. Okay, question ten actually fine value of maximum rate of change on the function at the point at f comma one zero okay question ten
Okay, so now uh, I move on to question 10. So another page here. Question 10. Question 10. Find the value of maximum rate of change. I find maximum rate of change. Of this function, fxy is equal to uh, sine xy. the point one zero. Okay, so as I as you know, the maximum rate of change is what now? Okay, I just want to find the maximum rate of change. Answer is really should we answer now is you just find out the rate gradient. Gradient, okay, gradient is actually Find the length of this gradient first. You get partial differentiation. What is this thing now, right? So we know gradient of f is partial differentiation with respect to x. I. Partial differentiation of f with respect to y. G. So this is equal to differentiation with respect to x. Sine differentiation, you get cosine, right? So cosine x, y. With respect to x, you keep y constant, so we get y. Direction, okay, differentiate sign x, y, you get cosine x, y, then differentiate with respect to x, you get y. Okay, then plus, partial differentiate with respect to y, you get uh, same thing, cosine x, y, differentiate with respect to y, your x, uh, your x constant now, x, j. Okay, now you put in the x equal to one, y equal to zero. Put this thing f at one zero. Put x equal to one, one equal to zero. So this is actually y zero now. So this zero i now. X equal to 1, y equal to 0, this is actually 1, j, because cosine 0 is 1, okay, x equal to 1, y equal to 0, okay? 1, 0, 1 times 0, and then this is 1 here. So, this is 1, j. So, the length of this thing at the point 1, 0 is 1. That's why answer is one at the back. Okay, so this is a uh, question ten. Okay, so this is actually can stop for a while first. I mean, stop recording now for a while first. So I don't need to record this anymore. I can stop recording. So otherwise, it's too long, right? 